All right, Jonathan, I've been looking for the perfect house. I cannot find it. And so I have decided I'm gonna build my next house. Problem is I've never built a house before and I don't know the first place to start. How does it work? Can I get construction loans? Can I finance my lot loan? I need help. Let's talk about it. That's what this video is all about. All right, so Jonathan, there's probably a lot of people out there right now that are thinking, whether it's because of inventory or something else, that they just need to build instead of buy. Yeah, I can't find it. A lot of people make the mistake, though, of getting the cart before the horse. We wanted to shoot this video to make sure that you don't make the mistakes that we're seeing a lot of other people make. We want to start with the end in mind. Yeah, so the first thing we want to talk about is you need to build your team before you even consider building a house or even acquiring a lot, right Austin? That's right, and I know this might sound crazy, but the most important person on your team when you're going to build a house is the builder. Yeah, those kind of work together. Build the house, builder. You need yeah, that guy. You Our need him. We see people go out and buy properties every now and then and get stuck with them because they can't build what they actually want to build on that property. And so if you're buying a house or buying a property without your builder, you are potentially putting yourself in a very risky spot. Yeah, that lot could have a really far setback, could have easements, encroachments, and you just can't build that four or 5,000 square foot house you want to build. Right. That lot is no bueno. So what do you end up doing? You have to list a lot and try to sell try it. Try to get out of it. And you might lose money, have to pay closing costs twice, so don't make that mistake. Yeah, so realtors don't get offended, but you are not the most important person in the process when someone's gonna build. It's the builder, you know, and a good realtor will tell you that, guys. If you don't know what builder to start with, ask your realtor. They're gonna have some recommendations for you for sure. All right, Jonathan, what's the next most important person on the team? We are your lender. Another big mistake we see, Austin, is people might go to a bank or a lender and get that lot loan. They're all excited. The builder's like, yeah, we can definitely build the house you want. Mm -hmm. And then they go to inquire about the construction loan and the lender's like, you don't qualify for this big of a construction loan. Right. So now you're in another trouble. That's right. Or the loan isn't gonna qualify for the property, right? We see people do that sometimes where they are overbuilding and the house isn't going to appraise. And so they're not gonna be able to finance every as much of that construction as they want to. And so you've gotta be able to start, again, this is counterintuitive. A lot of people focus on, I just need to finance the lot. I need to finance the construction. Then I'll worry about my permanent. Wrong, you need to worry about the permanent piece first. What is the maximum loan you can qualify for? And then back into it, okay, how much can I use for construction? Okay, then how much can I use for the lot? So yeah. you gotta think backwards, like we said, with the end in mind. Yeah, okay. so part of that team is builder, lender, and then the third one is the architect. Yep. Just because a, a builder can build you the big house, you wanna make sure you can design the house and has all the features and functionality that you want it to have. So gotta That's get right. that architect. Yep. And then who's the last person on the team? Well, our favorite, the realtor. And For so sure. if you don't have the realtor picked out, you definitely need to get a realtor on your team that is working with your builder and your architect to find that property that will fit the house that you're wanting to build. So realtor is a super, super important part of the team. So now, once you have your whole team together, you're in a position to go out and do what? Buy a lot. There we go. So step two is buying the actual lot. And there's two ways to do that, Jonathan. What are they? You can pay in cash or you can get financing. That's right. So if you don't have the money to buy the lot in cash, or maybe you do and you want to hold on to your liquidity, then a lot loan can be the way that you acquire that property. What do those look like typically? Yeah, I mean, we're big fans of lot loans because like Austin always says, when you're building a house, keeping your personal liquidity is very important. And so you want to try to leverage where you can. And on a lot loan, depending on how much you need, we can go up to 85% or 75% loan to value. So we can do massive uh, lot loans, but you need to bring some money. And that's a mistake a lot of people have. I have people call, I want to buy a lot and build a house and they don't have much money. It's like, you right. might only have 5%. You need to buy a house, but if you have 15 or 25%, that's gonna be the down payment requirement for that lot loan and most products. Yep. And if you only put the minimum down on the lot, you should be prepared that in step three, you might need to bring some more money to the table. Yeah, so, so step three is the construction phase, right? That's right. Got the team, got the lot, now we gotta go get the construction loan. So if you're getting a construction loan, you have to close in that construction loan and then we're paying off that lot loan. And then when you close that construction loan, your down payment will be determined by how much you finance in a lot loan. So if you 
finance the maximum amount in your lot loan, you can be pretty sure you're gonna bring more money on the down payment on the construction loan. But if you only borrowed 50%, or maybe you bought the lot in cash, then you have a strong possibility of 100% financing the construction. That's right. That's right. And so, and we're not saying one way is right and one way is wrong. It's gonna to totally depend on your situation. And that's why it's so important to have a lender, whether the lender can do the whole thing or not, you need to be working with your end lender from the very beginning so that they can help coach you through your liquidity, how liquid you need to stay throughout the entire process, and then what you're able to leverage from a liability standpoint. Yeah, so let's talk about the construction loan, some of the quick features, Austin. Yep. How does it work while my home is being constructed, I'm living with my family, I have an apartment I'm renting or a house I still own, but I'm building. How does that construction loan work while it's getting built out? It's beautiful. A lot of people freak out thinking that, oh man, if I'm getting a million dollar construction loan, I'm gonna have to be paying on a million dollar loan for the next two years before my house is finished. Um, not, not the case. Yeah. Uh, construction no loans are, they are built, uh, pun intended, to be interest only as you're going through the process. And they're interest only on what has been drawn. And so that's the word that we use when the builder needs cash to do the next phase of development on the house, it's called a draw. And so the first draw might be to clear the land, um, bring in the utilities and pour the foundation. Okay, so you're starting down here. Maybe it's 50,000, 100,000, 150,000. That's all you're paying on for the first month. And then as time goes on, the builder's gonna need more, and what you're paying on is increasing gradually over time. Which is beautiful, because somebody, you're living somewhere while you're building. That's and right. And so how much easier it makes from a financial and a logistical standpoint. Yep, and then the other two big categories that we talk about with construction loans are one-time close versus two-time close. And so, Jonathan, what's the difference between a one-time and a two-time? So a two-time closes, you're locking in your rate, closing a construction loan, takes 12 months to build. Well, now when your house is finished, now you gotta go back and close again on your permanent financing. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on what rates are doing, Austin. Mm -hmm. And then the one-time close, you're locking in your rate on the construction loan, and then when the house is finished, it just converts automatically to permanent financing yep. where you're paying principal and interest through the life of the loan, the 30-year fix, whatever term you agree to on the construction loan. So the one-time close is great if rates are rising because you locked it in. The two-time close might be great if rates are coming down, you have the ability to lock in a lower rate in that permanent financing. And you have that same ability on a one time as well. Maybe the lender will let you renegotiate at the end, mm -hmm. um, or you just simply refinance out of that one time close. So then also the two time close might give you a little bit more flexibility on the build. So if prices change on lumber, for example, That's right. they might allow you to increase your construction loan a little bit um, if you need it. So the two time close might give you a little more flexibility on the amount financed during the build. Whereas the one time close, it certainly protects you from upward swings in the market, which is very nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so once the construction's finished, my loans, I've reached, I've reached my maximum amount, what happens next? Well, yeah, a big thing when you go to close on the permanent financing is, did you go over budget or did you go under budget? Ah, yes. And so you just wanna figure out if you got a loan and the builder's like, hey, we need more to finish the house, then when you close that permanent financing, you might be bringing additional assets to closing. That's right. Or if you had a great builder and things went under budget, maybe you can recast your loan and have a smaller construction loan than you really needed. And so mm -hmm. that's a big important part that happens when you close on that construction loan and it converts to permanent financing. Yep. But after that, the fourth step is we move in. That's right. That's what we're waiting for, moving in. The, and then the construction loan, if it was a one-time close, converts to permanent. I'm making my full payments on that. And if it wasn't a one-time close, then I need to get my permanent financing and pay off that construction loan. Because if it's a two-time close construction loan, that thing is not built to be a long-term loan and it's gonna cost you dearly. And so if you haven't gotten started on it, and it's a two time close, you need to make sure your permanent financing is ready to go the day your construction is complete. You do not wanna carry that longer than you have to. All right, so those are the four steps. Build the team. Find a property. Get the construction loan. Move in. Let's go. When you're ready to build your house, give us a shout. We'll be happy to walk you through it, start to finish. Woo!